I had some questions about a confusion relating to high cortisol and low cortisol. How do you truly know if you have one problem versus another? This is a lot of confusion. Even if you get a 24-hour saliva cortisol test and it does show a problem, your symptoms might not match a classical high cortisol situation or even a low cortisol situation because sometimes the symptoms are mixed between both of these. So if we take a look at the Civil Collection of Medical Illustrations, Volume 4, Endocrine System by Frank Netter, MD, we get the section on high cortisol. The classic syndrome being Cushing syndrome where you have this huge waist, thin leg muscles, round face, you have insomnia, sometimes blood sugar issues, atrophy in your glutamus maximus, that's your butt muscle, acne, allergy, low vitamin D, excessive thinking, etc., eventual osteoporosis. Now, if we compare these symptoms over here with this condition, which is low cortisol, it's called Addison's disease, very, very different. In this condition, you pretty much have no more cortisol and you're very thin, you're tan, you have vitiligo, you have a very poor immune system, you are craving salt all day long because you're losing tons of salt, and you're completely burned out. So it's very confusing because some people have symptoms of high cortisol and some people have symptoms of low. So I wanted to clarify what's going on. If we take a look at Cushing syndrome, it's actually very, very rare. Three out of a million people get this condition every single year. If we take a look at Addison's disease, that's also very rare. One out of 10,000 people actually get Addison's disease each year. So what is going on here? It just doesn't make sense. Well, the next thing I'm gonna tell you will help you understand what's really going on. There's a subclinical problem with cortisol which means it may not show up on a blood test, it may not show up on a saliva test until it's very, very advanced. Because you don't just go from here to a disease overnight, it gradually happens over a period of time. So it's my belief that a lot of people are stuck in this subclinical area over here that's very, very hard to detect on certain testing. And here's what's happening. The receptor for cortisol becomes downgraded. In other words, you develop something called cortisol resistance. Now, the concept is very similar to insulin resistance, in which you have this high level of a certain hormone, which causes the receptor on the other side to start to become downgraded or blocked to the point where this receptor does not receive that hormone as well as it did in the past. Now, there is quite a bit of research on this. I'm going to put some links down below. Now, you're probably not going to find a lot of data if you do research on cortisol resistance, but you will find it under glucocorticoid resistance because this is just another name for cortisol. So what happens when you have this glucocorticoid resistance? You have a situation where your adrenals are pumping out a lot of cortisol, but cortisol is ineffective. It's not working. So you have both symptoms of high cortisol and low cortisol. I mean, think about it. Cortisol is supposed to suppress the immune system and reduce inflammation. But why then do so many people with high cortisol have all these inflammatory conditions? So what happens over time is you get this massive confusion in the endocrine system. Uh, if this is the hypothalamus right here in the pituitary that's supposed to be sending signals down to the adrenal. So if this cortisol being pumped out of the adrenals for whatever reason becomes inhibited or blocked, as in this right here, then the communication doesn't get back to the pituitary or the hypothalamus. So if there's no turn off switch, then you just get an on switch that's permanently on, causing the adrenals to pump out a lot of cortisol. Now, what is the best thing to do for the situation? Well, what you need to do is you need to do whatever you can to inhibit the trigger to cortisol, dropping stress. You need to isolate where the stress is coming from and do whatever you can to minimize the stress. 
I have a lot of data on this. I'm going to put some links down below. There's things that you can do from an exercise standpoint, change your eating, nutrients, and even a manual type massage technique that you can do to help reduce stress. Now, from a nutritional standpoint, if we take a look at what we're dealing with, we're, we're dealing with the glucocorticoid receptor problem. Now, I want to bring up a new word for you that potentially could be misunderstood. It's called agonist. Okay, an agonist is the opposite of an antagonist. So an agonist is something that stimulates something. It increases something. Now, there are certain drugs that they're researching right now that are glucocorticoid receptor agonists. And the reason why they're coming up with these is they're trying to find a treatment for this problem that doesn't have too many complications. Because if you think about it, if you have a glucocorticoid resistance, okay, so in other words, that, that hormone is not working, then logically it would make sense to give the person more of this hormone since it's blocked, right? But the problem with that is it makes things a lot worse. So if you were to give someone like prednisone with this condition, they might feel a little bit better temporarily, but they're going to gain a lot of weight. They're going to have blood sugar issues. And so there's certain drugs they're trying to come up with that acts like prednisone, which is a, a synthetic type of cortisol, without the side effects. However, if you know anything about me, I'm going to go more on the natural route. I'm going to look for plant or herbal or vitamin type versions of this right here. And one research paper describing a natural corticoid receptor and agonist is Panax Ginseng. So I put a link down below, and this may help in this condition. However, honestly, I don't think this is going to do much unless the actual root cause of your stress is greatly reduced. So in summary, if you're confused whether you have high cortisol or low cortisol, the most important thing you need to be focusing on is getting to the root of your stress and reducing stress as much as possible. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before